Welcome to the Atlanta Basketball Party, your home for the best Atlanta Hawks talk. It's local insight. You can't get anywhere but here at Locked On. I'm Tanitra Batiste, your host. Alongside me are Jarvis Davis and Deshaun Tate. The Atlanta Basketball Party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, guys, there might be a little conundrum with the Hawks. Will they, won't they, will they, won't they? Because they don't want that smoke again. We'll talk about it a little bit later. And the Hawks have some decisions to make about how they're going to do things down the stretch. But do they have the moxie to do it? We'll talk about that as well. And can we please ensure that Tanitra and Deshaun's projected record of this road trip is actually staying intact? But let's get started talking Jalen Johnson Jarvis. He, of course, signed a four-year $12,888,585 contract to be exact with the Atlanta Hawks back in 2021, all guaranteed that averages out to about 3.2 mil and some change, right? Now, if you were to look at some of the tracking charts, Fotrack, over the salary cap, those kinds of websites, they project that he's about the 53rd highest paid small forward in the NBA. Now we know he pretty much plays more power with a little small, but he's officially listed as small, which actually probably garners you more money these days. That said, Jarvis, is Jalen's contract situation maybe something that the Hawks have to consider? Like, is this going to be as difficult as it was with John Collins contract as far as when he becomes eligible for that extension? It's, I think it is because when you think about the situation that the Hawks are in, that, in right now with all of the trade rumors leading up to the trade deadline with DeJounte Murray, Mm -hmm. all of the speculatory stuff that's going on with Trey Young. And then you have Jalen Johnson basically being one of the front runners for an award for the most improved player award, right? Because quote unquote contract year, he balls out and you appreciate that, especially when the team, puts a vote of confidence by trading the guy that plays your position, you know, away. So, but, you know, you look at the whole injury piece, right? It it took him some time to develop, to get to this space. Yeah. And you, you, you have to pay him accordingly, right? Or do you pay him that, that, that max type money, not knowing what your future of your team looks like? Because if I were to go to, any old regular old Joe Schmo Hawks fan, I was like, okay, who do you see on this, the starting five being next year at this moment? Today, March 20th, who's the starting five for the Hawks in, in, in 2024, 2025 season? I don't know. I can't be, I won't be able to answer that question. So yeah. if you don't even, if the, the fan base and we, people that are, you know, cover this team on a daily basis, can't really give you a, who that starting five going to be, how are you going to pay them? Like, how? How are you going to know how to pay him? Let me let me yeah. say that. So I think that's kind of where I am with it. I think it's a big conundrum because, you know, with John Collins, he got the, what, the uh, five-year, $125 million contract. It's not a max contract. And we all know the, the story behind that piece. But, you know, at the end of the day, it looked bad in a couple yeah. of years because – he started to tail off and his role wasn't clearly defined for this team or yeah. it was defined to him and he just didn't quite accept. Yeah, fit the definition. Yeah. Right. And Deshaun, for me, Jarvis makes a couple of good points there. Uh, I mean, I'll probably go first and kind of go backwards or last and backwards. But yeah, with, with John Collins, so many situations should have been learning lessons from that, right? As far as overpaying him, which you should have looked at the fact that, as I always say, the year that he balled out if you will let's remember there were some issues that got him suspended so there's something to talk about there you know there's a thought of how and when he trailed off quite an interesting correlation just saying so with Jalen Johnson I feel like he's the opposite right I feel like he's trending up in the right ways and at the right times but then that poses a conundrum because you know you already overpaid John Collins once before it's you know someone who sit who truly sat in that power forward position you already overpaid him so you don't want to do that again to Jalen Johnson but the market is the market and the market dictates what it dictates and this guy we don't call him that enough but he's like a walking double double and I feel like he also has developed a bit of a perimeter game that John Collins never quite naturally or organically developed now one thing I will say Deshaun is Jarvis mentioned 
Most of us don't know what that 24-25 roster is going to look like, but most will tell you he's the guy that's the least tradable. Don't make, don't make that mistake. So all those things considered, Deshaun, I mean, how do you approach this Jalen Johnson situation? First of all, it's hard for me to even think about anything, especially comparing these two players from something that we just saw the other night where one guy was doing the dunking and the other guy was just Oh, don't dunk bring Ting Ting. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I, just, I couldn't help it. Hey, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Let me stop you there. John Collins didn't get dunked on. He got yammed on. Like, yeah. yammed. Yeah. Like, you got to emphasize that thing because that man was curling up like a baby. We talk yeah, he's still people. rocking. He's still rocking in the corner like Sealy on the color purple. Okay? It ain't... It, it. <laughs> Did I go too far? Oh, no, I too far. Out there, but okay. hey, you can go ahead and try. Go Look, ahead, and hey. I guess I started it. Look, y'all go oh, get the. Started it. It. Yep. I'm I'm in the middle of it all. Clearly, no. Um, <laughs> no, where I'm from, we call that getting tattooed. Is exactly what tattooed. happened. Yep. But um, it's permanent. That thing is <laughs> permanent. It's permanent. <laughs> but. <laughs> Come on, man. But, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Look away, Tate. Look, I know. I'm trying. I got to do this with my eyes closed. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. But no, outside of that, and, and this is also something that you just can't help but to compare to both of these guys because both mm-hmm. of them came right into the system and into the rotation and everything else yep. Um, and just really was just killing it from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, it, it's crazy because where you have somebody like John – who never, I felt like really never had like a skill set. Like, yes, he can run. Yes, he can jump. He started to obviously begin to develop, you know, the shooting, whatever. But that didn't come as natural as you see it with somebody like Jalen. Mm-hmm. Even from a ball handling standpoint, somebody yeah. that can run run the break and even start the break in a lot of occasions. Sometimes be the only one on a break and still finishing on the other end. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how much truth there was to this particular rumor, but I feel like at one point in time we was talking about, um, you know, uh, the 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 team was at you know he's he the, the team mentioned something about paying him 80 he said that he wanted 90 they were willing to give him about one or, or, or about you know 85 and just saying look we're gonna push it to the other side of the table and walk away but we really don't want to do it and then he gets 125 out of the deal so when you see the way that things transpire with him you almost kind of got to think what's up next with with Jalen considering his skill set and everything else and he's taken you know he's taken the league by storm like yeah. There's a lot yeah. of hype around this. I'm watching other games that aren't even Atlanta Hawks games and his name is coming up in conversations. And it ain't it. just about, yeah. you know, yeah. and it, it ain't just about most improved either. Um right. so I mean, you know, the he's he's going to he's going to get paid. He's going to have to get paid. But sometimes my question with that is You know, can he sustain after getting paid? Is this something that's going to continue on? Because we know after some guys get their money, there's a little bit of a drop off and other things like that. Um, But I don't know. That's just that it's interesting to me. I'm going to love to see how, you know, that pans out because, you know, it's no, no secret, just like you guys were mentioning before, you know, him being one amongst two and probably the only one and i say that kind of quietly the only one that is untradeable on this team as what it's been seeming and sounding like lately yeah. um but you know it, it, he's definitely a critical piece you know and a very intricate piece to this team because he could do so many things kind of like a swiss army knife showing more defense than he used to have and then i ever yes. thought that he had and yeah. just so many so many uh, just a, a fearlessness i think the main thing is another part is he's setting an example for the rest of his teammates the guys that don't want to go out there and ball sometimes or trying to decide if tonight will be their night or if it's not or if they should just mail it in he's playing hard 110 percent every single night yeah. even when it's not his night so i think yeah. he's setting a very good example to nature we always talk about the leadership maybe he's mm-hmm. not the vocal leader maybe he's not the emotional leader when you're talking about guys who are leading by example for mm-hmm. if not nothing else just this one particular year he's got to be somewhere at the top of that list yeah and you know we are starting to hear more about his leadership piece he talked about the conversations he was having with kobe Bufkin about the transition from the g league to the nba and some of the nuances to how you make that transition a bit smoother that's leadership and i'm not trying to be funny going back to him yamming on austin reeves but he stood over old boy okay and was like yeah and that's the kind of grit and grime that we've been saying 
we we thought was missing from this team for a minute. The other piece there I wanted to say is this. We always talk about Trey as being the best player on the Hawks team. This is true. But Jalen's the most valuable. The reason he's the most valuable is because wing defense, perimeter offense and perimeter defense are a thing. And yes, we know that obviously Trey's perimeter offense is off the chain when it comes to hitting a three. But you need somebody who can defend the three. And this guy is a stretch if we've ever seen one. And he continues to evolve the definition of a stretch for a stretch on the front court. Because really, he's listed on the depth chart at three, four, and five. Let's just be real. And he can play them all solidly. So that's why it's going to be very interesting to see how they manage this. Because we know that you have got to play, you've got to pay a wing defender premium money in this league if you want to be a contender when we start to get down to the end of the season and into the postseason that's just kind of the way it's going in in the league right now so when we come back we're going to talk a little bit more about this final stretch of the season and the Hawks having to make a decision on how they're going to manage through it This episode of our Atlanta basketball party is brought to you by eBay. Passion, drive, and patience. We just told you about it. It's Jalen Johnson. That's what brings home the winning trophy because we think he might just bring home that trophy for most improved player. But it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and like I tell you guys, those really, really nice seat covers, whether you're into speed, power, or that would be style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, just like I did. And your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need, at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. So gentlemen, we have finally gotten to the final, final, super final, regular season final stretch. 14 games left. Man, can't even believe 14 games are left. You can Very say that a number of different <laughs> Exactly. You can, yeah, you can really see, you can you can hear that and see that however you want to, good people. But 14 <laughs> games are left in this season, Deshaun. And the Hawks, for all intents and purposes, are locked in as the 10th seed in the play-in tournament. There's really no way for them to bump up to nine, and quite honestly, no way to bump back to eleven and be out of the play. And that said. Should Quinn Snyder start resting players to avoid more injury? And the reason I thought about that, Deshaun, was because you know it scared the but Jeebies out of me when Jalen Johnson went down and rolled over and that was his ankle. I, you know, I went back into the prayer closet. So it really got me to thinking, is this the time where maybe rest management should uh game management should be a thing? First of all, I don't know exactly what Bejeebies is, but if it was anything like what I felt <laughs> when he went down. Uh, it was probably very similar to what you were feeling. Um, you know, it definitely did bring the thought, you know, to our heads instantly. Like, why is he in the game? Especially when, you know, it, it, it's it's not. You're down as, 34. You know, competitive, exactly. Um, in addition, I think that there has to be like a very uh, f- fine balance there somewhere. Because I don't necessarily know if you should just rest them without playing per se because i'm not sure how much that's going to help you i think this team needs more and more basketball probably as much as it could probably get um but in the same in the same breath uh, you don't want to have injuries so i think just putting guys on minutes restrictions and things like that or you know when things are clearly number one when things are clearly going off the rails as we just talked about they were that's just at the top that's where guys need to be sitting down but as long as games are competitive, I think you kind of have to get a feel for it. And it's, you know, their playing time being kind of spotty. Um, because what I don't want to happen to see happen is that um, we've all heard of the analogy. Instead of, you know, playing to win, guys start playing not to lose. I think the more basketball you play, the better. I think you sometimes have a bigger risk at injury from not playing and putting those guys out the floor on the floor um, than you do from them actually playing in games. So I think it's just a balance. Um, but the stuff that just makes sense to the average basketball head or lack thereof, 
you have to make those kinds of decisions. You have to be sitting your guys, resting your guys, having real conversations with them about what, how they feel. Do they yeah. feel good about it? Not making them feel like, you know, because obviously there was a rule that was recently put in place. And I know this mm-hmm. is something a little bit different, you know, that if you don't play X amount of games then you can't be considered for all NBA awards, MVPs and other stuff like that. I know that this isn't exactly that, but that also created something to make guys feel like, uh, I'm going to give it a go, even though I know I probably shouldn't have those sit down with your players, have those realistic conversations with them and come to somewhat of like a happy medium, like a, a, a mutual agreement of them being on the floor and what they do and shouldn't be doing. Go out there and yeah. shoot your jump shots and try to be competitive and whatever else, but don't try and go out there jumping over folks and clearing them like he did the other night. I'm not sure if I would be willing to go that extent. It's just hard to turn that switch off when you're a basketball player and when, 